Hi, this is T with T Quilts, and I'm here today to do fusible applique. I'm actually working on a block of the month from Chick called Chick Jubilee by Bunny Hill Designs. And my club, we all have <clears throat> decided that we're going to work on this project. So the first thing I do when I'm working on any year-long project is I get a binder and I get I write the date on the cover of when I start. So today will be my start day. And then I put sheets into the book with all of the appropriate paper pattern parts. And that way I'm organized. So these are all of the general instructions I just went through and fabric choices that they used. I'm actually going to just use scraps to make mine. And then for each month I have, um, well not for each month, I actually combined my folders for two months because I didn't have a lot of dividers. So I have all of my information in for the two months in the folders. In addition to pattern, I'm going to also need some sort of fusible web since I'm doing fusible applique. I'm using Steamacine too light. And I'm only using it because I got a lot of bags of these that I have not used in years. So I'm just trying to get rid of it. I actually use Heat and Bond Light for most of my fusible uh, projects. But this is what I'm using today. You will also need a pencil. I like using mechanical pencils because I can always get a sharp point. I know a lot of people do use the permanent black marking pens, but I think and feel that those cost more compared to the pencil. So I just, I'm comfortable with the pencil. I haven't had any mishaps with it, so that's what I use. You also need a light box. Some paper scissors for cutting. And you're going to need your pattern. So I've already copied out uh, traced out some pieces the thing to remember about patterns that are originally made for hand applique or some other form of applique other than fusible web you could there's so many different types of applique that you could do that the patterns are not reversed so when I'm looking at my pattern my rabbit is facing one particular direction as well as the chick and if I want that to happen in the pattern I need to make sure that I reverse the pattern when I'm marking on my fusible web so that's where the light box comes in I'm going to just lightly cut on my light box so I have my light box on and what I do is I actually tape down my pattern if it's very intricate if it's not I just hold it in place and then I put fusible web we got a rabbit on here already but we're gonna pretend it's empty and I just put it down over the spot and then I trace it. I don't actually trace the reverse of the pattern onto here. The light box prevents me from doing that step. If you don't have a light box, you can also use a window on a bright day or during the daytime. Or you can trace your pattern with the permanent marking pen on the back and then you'll be able to see it through the fusible web on the back as well. A little bit better than just using the black lines here. <clears throat> so now when I normally cut out, <clears throat> so when I normally trace out my patterns on the fusible web, I just leave space all around 
the design so that I have at least a quarter of an inch all the way around the patterns when they're cut out and if I have any scraps since I'm working on a project that will use little pieces I'll keep my scraps into a separate little baggie so I keep all of my scraps in here so when I have smaller things I need to trace I can go in and get some smaller pieces so then once I get it traced I go ahead and cut out leaving about a eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch around each piece and I'm actually using paper scissors for this And the closer you actually cut around your fusible web will be the less fabric that you will waste when it comes time to laying your pieces out. Okay. So I've got all three pieces cut out. would lay my piece onto the back sides of my fabrics and I've already done that to these fabrics here just to save some time and then I would use my iron and I would fuse that onto the back so you want to fuse your piece to the wrong side of the fabric so this is the right side of my fabric and this is the wrong side where I have fused my fabrics. After you've fused your fabrics, you then take a pair of good scissors because you are going to be cutting fabric, although you're still cutting some paper. So I don't use my Ginger or dressmaker shears, but I will use like a pair of Fiskars that I've bought for just trimming applique. And when, you know, they're about $15 or less if you can get a coupon and then if they go dull I just replace them with a new pair but this is the only thing that I do with these scissors is to cut out my applique pieces and so this piece here is actually going to be on this chick as a wing when it's done so I'm not going to cut out any more right now. I have quite a few pieces cut and I want to talk about something else. So these pieces have all been cut. So this is my bunny and then it has a bunny ear that's kind of overlapped out here and I have three eggs and this bunny that's going in the basket and then I also have my basket handle here what I wanted to show you is sometimes on big pieces and I know I'm gonna have some overlap I'll trace out my original design like I did with this rabbit I'll trace out the entire design and then I will go once I do that before I fuse it to the back of my fabric I will just cut like a half inch rectangle inside so I'm not actually fusing all of this fabric down I just don't want things to be very stiff with fusible that I can't stitch through it because the, even though I'm using light interfacing the more layers I add that fusible web is getting thicker and thicker but on my smaller pieces, I do have the full background images showing. Now, on for my basket handle, I have already just tacked my ends down so that I could know where they were going. And then I'm hoping that I can just smooth this down and press up as I go. So I put my basket down here and then I kind of lined up my tips so that I can go ahead and get my basket handle down. So you must start layering 
so on the pattern they actually have numbers to kind of help you with layering but I needed to know where my basket handles were gonna go first for me even though it's number six and my egg is number one because I need to know where the basket is going to sit so that I know how far the eggs need to come down so you can use this pattern as a template with your light box and place all of your pieces underneath as well so let's try that technique see if we can see through everything with the light box you could also use a pressing sheet applique pressing sheet and then you could also see the entire project at one time as well so I'm going to lay this down where my basket handles are look like I'm going to be in that area when I press so I'm going to remove my paper and light box and just slide this back down the thing to remember with fusing is that you don't want to iron you just want to press and on the steam seam it says press for like 10 seconds in each spot overlapping a little so that's what I'm doing. Now, if you have an applique piece that's not critical about where pieces are placed, you can just go ahead, peel off your backing, off your pieces. which I don't, um, I personally don't think that this one has to be rocket science. So I'm going to take all of the paper off. I'm going to just lay my basket in position. And then I'm going to flip back, stick in my bunny, but his little paw comes over the top so you got different layers to the applique some things are under and some things are over so I'm going to put the purple egg here and the orange egg over here The orange egg is actually on top of the purple and then I have a bluish green egg here that's under his paw and also slightly under the little rabbit's belly And then the last piece that's actually on the actual rabbit is the rabbit's ear and it's just tucked underneath a little accent for the ear okay so then i would fuse that down with my heat source. So normally I would use my large iron to heat set these in place, but
but I'm trying to do this in my work area so So now I do have a chick that goes down in this corner. This little chick here goes down in the corner. And then I need to do the sign for my three eggs. And then I need to add a butterfly. So I have all of these pieces already ready to um, be placed. I just need to cut them out. So I'm going to cut them out and then I'll return. and I have my entire block fused so there's my butterfly up in the top and I'm hoping you can see where I used the pencil and I drew in the antennas and I have a little mark where my eye is going to go on my rabbit and I also embroidered the free eggs on my machine and I added the chicken legs so now it's time to do the stitching around all of the appliques and I have not done this on this machine yet so I would recommend if you don't know what stitch you want to use that you practice your stitching on a piece of scrap and that's what I'm going to do I have an open toe foot and I've also added some embroidery thread So I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch and my length I want to put down to say maybe 0.5 millimeters. My width I'm not really sure about. We'll put it at one millimeter just to see what it looks like. If it's too little we'll just increase. So that looks a little small to me. So now I'm at two millimeter. And this is the stitch that I want to use for my chicken feet. And antennas. So this is how that stitch looks. And I want something very small and dainty for those areas, so I think that will be sufficient. So I'm going to come over to my top. And I'm wondering if I might need to use some interfacing or tearaway stabilizer. So let me get a tearaway stabilizer and I'll be right back. On the back of my piece, I just added a piece of tearaway stabilizer. And then on the front, I just used a few pins outside of my stitching area to just hold it in place so it's not flopping. So the first thing I want to do are my chicken feet. So I'm going to go do the little V and then I'm going to stop. So the first thing I want to do is I always want to back stitches to make sure I'm tacking. So let's just do a few backing stitches. And then I'm going to sew that zigzag stitch until I get to the leg line. When I get to the leg line, I'm going to pivot and do the other side of the foot. I 
get to the bottom, I'm going to do some more tacking stitches. And then go ahead and cut that. Trim my thread. And then I'll just let you see how that looks. So I did the V for the feet and now I'm going to go straight up and do the entire leg with the last part of the foot. So here it is with the little chicken foot completely sewn. So I'll just put it down here so you can see that. But I sewed my upside down V and then I just sewed a line straight down. And that's sufficient enough for the feet in my opinion. This is actually going to be a long project and I really would normally do something like this with hand applique but I just don't have time to do that and I didn't want to start with that commitment and then not be able to finish out the entire project by hand. So this is what I'm doing. I'm doing as much of it as I can on the machine and there may be a few stitches that I can't get done by the machine and I'll worry about that when I get to it. So I want to trim that. Now those could have been sawn on by machine or you can do this by hand but this is what my chicken feet looks like and I'm actually going to go around my entire block with this zigzag stitch and I am probably going to have to go back to my scrap piece and see what width I want to use to go around the larger pieces but on my small pieces I think that I will use this too millimeter width and my 0.5 length so I think I'm going to write that on my scrap so I'll have that and I won't forget because as again this is going to be a year-long project so any stitches that I use I will put on my scrap and then I will mark it so that I know what that stitch is so I am going to do a few more stitches and then I'll come back and just show you further progress. Here is my completed block with the applique on. I did not get a chance to do all of the machine stitching. I've been very busy and so I haven't had time to really work on this project but I didn't want the stitching to hold up me posting the information about how to do fusible applique. So I did do some stitching on the basket that you saw and I did the butterfly but I have not done the little detail stitching of the antennas because I would probably do that on my long arm during the quilting process so I just wanted you to see that I have at least gotten the appliques down for this section and I will continue to work on this project but that's it for now, and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.